As you probably know, coloring books are all the rage. But the question is, what do you do with the coloring book images once you've done them? Well, have I come up with a really cool idea for you. We're going to make jewelry. So the first thing is I've chosen a couple cool images from a coloring book. And I really liked these pineapples, and I thought they'd make really cute earrings. So that's where I started. The next thing is I need a piece of shrink film. And you don't need a big piece. You can totally just use a scrap of shrink film, whatever you have around. Um, and and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a shrink film right on top of the coloring book image that I want to use. And you can see that this has lots of different designs. So I think I'm going to use this pineapple here. Then I'm going to use some gel pens. And one of the things to know about gel pens is when you first get them, you want to go ahead and take off the little glue bob that's on there. But you'll also want to get the ink flowing. So I have a piece of scratch paper here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the ink flowing by just running out. And as soon as I see that it's flowing, then I'm ready to start tracing. Now, one of the things that I think everybody likes about coloring books is that it's an incredibly meditative process. You just don't have to think, you don't have to do anything, you just go ahead and do it. And one of the things that I like about this little project that we're making is that it's incredibly forgiving because all I'm doing right now is simply tracing the lines that I see. And the coloring book is not the boss of me. It's more of like a guideline. And so what I'm doing is I'm just choosing which lines I want to copy and which lines I don't. So if I want to copy all of them, I absolutely can. And if I don't want to, then guess what? I don't have to. So I'm just gonna take my time going around, tracing all of this. Now I'm using a gel pen that's definitely meant for a slick surface, that's gonna do a good job writing on a slick surface. You could certainly also, um, I find that rubbing alcohol or something like that on top of the shrink film also helps because sometimes the um, oils from your fingers will interfere and make it a little bit difficult but I'm just going ahead and tracing and relaxing and you can take as much time as you want with this. So once I've done that and I have one here which is already all done and I'll show you just on a piece of white paper so you can see it a little bit better and you can see it has this nice dimensional shiny raised look here. So now I want this to look really textured and cool. I don't want anybody to know that this is actually shrink plastic. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna use a mixture of this kind of um, transparent dimensional ink and then some of a more sort of opaque dimensional ink. So again, I start it off onto a piece of paper and then I'm just coloring. And the nice thing here is that you do not have to be a good colorer at this point because if you've created these lines, because they're raised, it's actually creating a little well for you to go ahead and put the color into, which I think is super duper neat. So I'm just gonna take my time. And remember, just because it's a pineapple doesn't mean it has to be yellow. Get creative, you're an artist, make art artistic things happen. So now I'm gonna switch over to this more kind of opaque ink, which is gonna give such a cool sort of fuzzy almost look when the plastic shrinks. And I do the same thing. I get the ink started and then I go ahead and I just fill in any of the wells that I want. Now, how many colors should you use? Well. If you're like me, you should use all the colors. And that's one of the things that's so fun, I think, about coloring is that you really can embrace whatever kind of artist you are. If you're more of a sort of a monochromatic person, then you can go ahead and be very monochromatic. If you're a person who just loves color and can't get over it, then you can just color all day long. This is a great activity to do with kids. And you can see that any shape you wanted, you could do, whether it's with a coloring book, something you make up yourself, whatever it is. So once I have it all colored in, and by the way, you can see what different colors I used here as opposed to here. And even the two pineapples have different patterns and are different colors. But if you really look closely, what you'll see is places where I messed up. And remember, there are no mistakes. It's only creative opportunities. So even though I've gone over the lines and things are kind of a mess, it's fine. You can also see what's transparent and what's opaque. And having a mixture of the two kinds of ink is really important. So once this is done, something that's very important, which I kind of learned the hard way, I'm not gonna lie, is that you have to make sure that you go ahead and you punch your hole for your earrings before you do anything else. Then I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna go ahead and cut around 
around these. Now you don't have to cut carefully at all. And in fact, if you look here at the one that I already have cut out, it's not cut super carefully. So all I'm gonna do is I have a heat gun and I'm using a bamboo skewer and I'm on a heat resistant surface, which is just a piece of tin foil. And what I'm doing with the skewer is simply holding this in place so it doesn't go skating around my table. And with the heat gun, I'm simply starting to curl the shrink plastic and you worry for a second that something really bad has happened, but trust me, it's all okay. And I'm just aiming that heat gun right there until it all shrinks up into this nice little shape. Now it's still a little curly, so here's my trick to you. Go ahead, fold the tin foil over a nonstick surface. Use an acrylic stamping block to push down to flatten it out. And as soon as this cools, it'll be ready to go ahead and peel off and you will have an amazing earring. So to finish the earring, what I'm gonna do is I have these little earring hooks, okay? And if you can look and see here, if I can get my finger out of the way, there's a loop, but the hole that I have is a little bit not right, so I need to open that loop up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers. And with these pliers, what I'm gonna be able to do now is I'm gonna be able to open up that loop just enough that now when I take this hopefully cooled shrink plastic, it's a little warm, but we'll make it work. All I have to do is simply slide it on and now I have a hole that's large enough and boom, I have a fabulous earring which looks shiny on this side and just so cool and dimensional on this side. And if you look over at my finished projects here, you'll see here are my earrings. I've even got a large pineapple necklace to match. And if you look at the ring, you can really see the shrinkage because here's the original feather and there's how the ring turned out. Pretty darn cool.